Welcome to our broadcast from the Church of the Resurrection in Crosby, Texas. Today's message is brought to you by Father Rusty Elliser, Senior Pastor of the Church. Before we begin, invite your family and friends to gather around the screen as we watch and hear the sermon from God's servant. And now as we join the congregation in the name of the church, we pray you will open your mind, your ears, and your heart to receive the word of God. This morning, I mean, this a big part of our week. This last week was spent uh, just trying to stay warm, and so um, I was thinking about this morning. And uh, normally, I probably would have preached on the gospel, but I wasn't up here much this week to to, to do very much work on a sermon. But I was thinking about it this week uh, at home, and I was thinking about y'all and looking on Facebook and other places and seeing what some people's lives were like. Um, so the first thing I would say is, good for you for coming to church this morning. May God bless you. I don't know if you're here just because you thought the heat would be on, or if you're here because you want to give thanks to God that maybe things in your house weren't as bad as some other people, or things are really bad at your house and you're here and, uh, and you want to pray. I might say this again at the end of the service, but in case I forget, um, if things are difficult right now, if you don't have hot water or still heat or something like that, let us know after the service because there's... Uh, we have everything in our house. You're welcome to come take showers. And maybe there's somebody else that lives close to you. And uh, we can share and, and help each other out. But as I was thinking about this and thinking on Ash Wednesday and about the beginning of Lent. And I thought, you know, on Ash Wednesday or this, this first week or so, you probably come and, you know, you really kind of thunder against sin or tell you how much stuff you need to be giving up or stop doing or, or this or that. Um, and you might have come this morning expecting to be beaten over the head a little bit. But uh, it's been a tough week, and maybe the Lord has a better word for us than just, than just those type of things. And so I just want to share, like I said, one or two thoughts um, on something that's really the foundation of everything else that we do during Lent and any other time of the year for that matter. Because in Lent, we talk a lot about what to do. We talk a lot about uh, what that looks like. But as I was thinking this week, the, the simple question occurred to me that I think will be helpful to be reminded of today. You know, in Lent, we talk a lot about returning to the Lord, so I would just like for us to think about, but who is the Lord to whom we're called to return, right? What is God like? What is this God like, the God that we're coming to? So, if we would have gathered on Ash Wednesday, we would have heard those words from the prophet Joel, who's, when he said, return to the Lord your God. And he goes on to quote the first part of what God said to Moses at Mount Sinai. When he revealed his name and said, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And that's where Joel, Joel stops. Psalm 103, which would have been the psalm we would have read that night, expands on this idea. It says this, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to, ang slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He will not always accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are, he remembers that we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass. Like wildflowers, we bloom and die. The wind blows and we're gone, as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear Him. So I wanted to remind you this morning that the Lord, who is calling us to return, is not a ruthless dictator. He's not a stern judge. He's not an unreasonable parent standing with his arms crossed and saying, and why should I let you come back home? Right? The scriptures say he is a tender and compassionate father who wants the best for his children. In one of the most famous stories that Jesus ever told, he revealed that far from being like a parent who is standing and waiting with his eyebrows raised and his I told you so speech, our father 
runs down the road to meet and embrace and kiss and shower his favor upon his returning sons and daughters. That is what Jesus said God is like. We're Christians. We don't believe Jesus got it wrong. But not only did Jesus speak to us words about the Father, the scriptures say he was the Father's word made flesh. So that as we see him, we see the word. We hear the word. We see that God is one who hears the cries of the suffering. That God is one who receives and eats with sinners. One who was, would go to the cross to suffer the curse for his people so that they might be spared and renewed. This is the God to whom we are called to return. The God who created us. The God who loves us. The God who can give us true peace and joy and true life. And the God who desires to do this for us. Why would we not drop everything and run to Him when He calls to us? For again, He has promised to receive us. And not only to receive us, but as we prayed in our colleague today, to give us a new heart for the colleague fresh money. God has promised to give us a new... God not only does His part in waiting to receive us, He comes on our side to give us the heart that we need. To give us a repentant heart that desires to return to Him in the first place. An enlightened heart with the capacity to know Him. A tender heart that wants to turn from sin and walk in His ways. So then, what can we do? Well, we can confess and turn from those sins that hinder our communion and life with God. We can seek the help of the church to do this. Sometimes we get so tangled up in sin, wrong thinking, wrong acting, that we need the help of the church, the ministry of the church, and the help of each other. We can give time to being with God, to being still, to listening to His Word, even putting aside other pleasures so that we can do that. We can pray that God will fulfill His promise and give us a new and contrite heart. And then we can let the life of His Spirit be expressed in us as we seek to do good to those around us. And so with all those thoughts in mind, let us this day begin to return to the Lord who waits to receive us and renew us. Amen. If you are watching from home today and unable to receive the body of Christ in person, please join with us in the following prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you for watching the broadcast today. We hope you will visit the campus of the Church of the Resurrection and take advantage of the many ministries available to you and your family. Until next week, may God richly bless you and keep you.